All right, we're back with the 65 GMC. We have a whole lot done. I didn't grab the camera yesterday afternoon when I started pulling stuff apart. But uh, you can see there's nothing left on the back. No brackets, no anything. There were big brackets on these four holes, these four holes for the leaf springs right here. And since we're going chuck arm, I decided to just take it all off, make the frame nice and clean. We'll put a coat of black on it, just some basic black, <clears throat> even though it's all hidden. Frame is in great condition. We did all the measurements, uh, did some diagonals. It's all square. So any wonkiness that was in the cab before, which we had before, right now we're gonna blame it on the springs, the old leaf springs not being even, you know, sagging differently. So next up, <clears throat> finish cleaning this up, and then the axle sitting here. We gotta take all of these brackets off. This is the leaf spring pad the bump stop pad shock mounts on each side that's where the uh, brake hose came down from the frame so we've got to take all those brackets off and then put our new brackets on which i didn't grab them but i can in a minute but they're they don't fit because all these brackets are in the way which is why they got to come off and i'll clean this up <clears throat> and have it ready when we put it in there we can bolt everything together and then we'll be able to set our pinion angle we took measurements and angles prior to taking it out I've got it all written down and I'm not gonna try to share the details of the measurements because your trucks gonna be different it may just be a eighth of an inch here and a quarter inch there if you try to go by somebody else's measurements it's not gonna work take take your own measurements before and then match it back to it. That's I've got a dot right here where that yellow is. There's a center punch there. And then my notes, they're referenced back to the frame. So I have some triangulation to find this center and then everything else can be centered from that. And then we have other measurements from, I think we talked about it from the frame back to center lines on this too. So when we get it back in there and start lining things up, we'll be we'll know we're back in the same place, and it will uh, the, the tires will be in the wheel wells centered. Yeah. All right. These are the brackets that came with the kit from POL. You can see they got six holes in here, and even though this is a GMC and never came with this setup, because they use the same frames as the Chevy, they're they're sitting there. So. That lines up like that. One there, one there. They're identical. The cross members got an angle built into it. I don't know how well that comes across in the video. And so the truck arm will come straight back to the axle. And so it'll be, it'll be going up and down like this. This is the pivot point. This has got three places. The instructions talked about <clears throat> it, it allows you to adjust each one is like two degrees of pinion angle so it's zero two and four or you could go down with it we're gonna set ours up in the middle hole and then if we're off a little bit we can move it up or down they also talked about the anti squat I have no experience with that I know basically what it is but it's, it's like for racing this is a cruising truck, so we'll set it up in the middle and it'll be good to go. They, provide, they provided all the hardware. Nice grade eight bolts from POL. Real pleased with that. These big ones are the ones that go through. I keep dropping stuff. These are the ones that actually go through the uh, bracket. So this will be a nice setup. I'm gonna have to push some uh, bushings and stuff into the truck arms before we hang them up. But this is where it's all going. I've already done a wire brush on here, grind it off. I need to grind that one a little more. I didn't get enough, but get all that done while the truck's up in the air. 
if you do do this this is one thing we had to do you'll see some straps right here this thing has no weight on the back end of the truck so it's strapped to the lift two post lift four arms <clears throat> and we have another heavy duty jack stand under the front cross member because with going up and down this thing is very very tippy it would probably go over on its nose if you're doing this on jack stands in your garage just you can be aware of that but not going to be as big a deal because your jack stands are going to be on all four corners if you do have a lift be super careful lifting it up don't kill yourself we had a guy <clears throat> in houston just last month at a shop somewhere and he uh, there was some kind of lift accident i never heard exactly what happened but it killed him so that was in a brake shop exhaust shop somewhere down in houston Safety first. We love our old trucks, but we don't want to kill anybody doing it. <laughs> yeah. Close the curtain on that, huh? Well, didn't mean to. <laughs> there we go. Can't leave well enough alone. Because of what Blake just told you, we've got to have a way of picking the rear end up, and setting the pinion angle and everything. So they make a, a stand for it. You can buy, but we're cheap. We're not cheap. We just prefer to make our own. So, well, we went out in the backyard on some channel, three inch channel. And let me see, we're going to set one like that. About like that. Somewhere in that vicinity. I made out of channel. I'll go like that in there. I made two more. Go here and here. They'll be bolted. I'll drill holes and get them bolted down to the table. And then I gotta move it a little bit. Out of the same three-inch channel. Put that in there. And we'll put these in there like that. And like that. Of course, this is all going to be slid back to here. And then this scissors jack will be here. It'll be in the front. We'll use this to set the pinion angle. And once we get it in there, it'll rotate in this. Uh, give me that tube there. Let's see if it's long enough here. Barely. <laughs> this will be the rear end, per se. That'll set in there like that. Pinion angle. And then we can set the pin, it'll be like that. We can move this up and down, and it'll rotate this, and set our pinion angle after we get it all set in the truck. Yeah, if you and can imagine can, a big center pumpkin here, and so the pinion will be sitting right here, and that'll go. <laughs> so, we got it all cleaned up for the most part. And if you can't see, I don't think you can, this is a lift table. <clears throat> So it goes from 30 up to 48 inches. So we just made this much rise to clear the pumpkin and to work with the lift. It wouldn't work very good on if you had your car on jack stands. But you could do the same sort of thing with jack stands and then use your floor jack to get everything set. Right. But we like to be. Well, we. We have a couple of other jobs coming up where we're going to have to do pinion angles. And so in the next six months or so, so we decided we we're going to do this. Yeah. So we'll have the tool. If you can build a tool to make life easier, it's good. If you're going to do it more than once. If not, you do it the hard way. Yeah. Work smarter, not harder. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what we're going to have constructed, hopefully by tomorrow. Everything will be welded together, <clears throat> bolted down and ready to go. I do have to make another piece of channel or two to go underneath the jack to pick it up. So once I get this on we'll take some measurements and find out just how high this has got to be so we'll know exactly from the center of the axle to the pinion, bottom of the pinion. We'll be good then. 
looking at it like that, it almost might be okay. Yeah. It, we don't know exactly how high that little scissor jack lives. That's the next step. <laughs> we get it lubed up. It's been setting a while. But this is what you do when you got stuff laying around. It, when the wife says, why don't you throw this stuff away? This is why you don't throw that stuff away. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, this is what it started with. Yeah. It's, it was some shelf standards that got bent somewhere along the line, so they're not safe to use these shelves anymore. But it's sure nice channel iron, yeah. you know. And even if you don't use this four or five inches, you've got lots. This was a whole eight foot piece, and now it's all that. So, one man's junk is another man's treasure. All right, then. So, I'm gonna get back to work before the boss fires me <laughs> again. <laughs>